crank the volume, because it's about to get loud. LFA. Big block Chevys. Ferrari 250 GTO. Mazda 787B. What do all these cars have in common? Other than being worth way more than your broke ass can afford. Why are you crying? John C They sound goddamn amazing. So, you come to me and you're like, hey Trav, I want a car that sounds goddamn awesome, but like you said, I'm broke as hell. Can you help me out? Well, fear not, because I can. In fact, I've got 15 of them. So turn up those knockoff Raycons and pay attention, because we're gonna jump right into it here on Idealist. An American V8 is basically rock and roll. Loud, brash, fun. It's basically the distorted electric guitar of the automotive world. And the fender of cars is Ford, who's been making their lumpy Windsor-based V8 for pretty much ever and sticking it in just about everything. That's right, if you want a cheap, plentiful, great sounding car, just buy a Mustang. Which one? Doesn't matter. Anything pre-Coyote has basically the same sound. Let that rumble just roll right in. Just take a listen and try to tell me it doesn't sound good. Ah, of course, Nissan 350Z. Some people say it sounds like farts. Oh dear God. But I think a VQ sounds like a jazz trumpet and maybe a, a little like farts too. A trumpet being emulated on Fruity Loops, if you will. Damn! The good news is they're cheap. And unlike some of the cars on our list today, the Z is a great car to own. Just listen and see if it's a noise you like. Next, this car I would not recommend buying for your daily, but the Fiat 500 Abarth is nothing if not great sounding. Honestly, any four cylinder that makes turbo noises is usually a good bet. But the complete lack of any real exhaust system takes the little Fiat to a new level. Even bone stock, they have that pre-90s unmastered Europunk thing going on. Right down to California attempting to have them outlawed because they're too loud. But honestly, could you outlaw this? A Subaru Outback. Has Trav lost his mind? Yes. But not because I'm saying this one sounds nice. The H6 offers a new take on an old classic, like a dubstep remix of Beethoven. Since flat six is also the secret ingredient to the German classic composer, Porsche, open up your ear holes and prepare to be amazed. <laughs> All right, to preface it, I'm about to say old Chevy truck, but just know that's really a stand-in for literally any Chevy or GM product with a small block. You could go Camaro, or Suburban, or even the mighty G20 van. It's the Gibson to Ford's Fender, with deeper lows and scooped mids. Listen up, then tell me in the comments which sounds better, Ford's V8 or Chevy's. Do you hate on people who buy V6 versions of V8 muscle cars? Yes. Well, knock that shit off. Let people enjoy things, even if they are wrong. Besides, the Chevy Camaro V6 actually sounds really good. Like the new rock everyone loves to hate on since it doesn't sound like old rock. But when you really listen, you find out it's still got pretty much all the same elements you love. The noise from the Neon SRT4 always catches me off guard. 
If the Fiat 500 is punk, the Neon is the gritty garage band punk made by kids. The ones with cheap guitars and blown out amplifiers. And it somehow sounds way better than it should. It's the combination of turbo and dodge madness. Take a listen and you tell me if it's what you expect from an econo box. The synthesized electronic drone is a staple of, well, many music genres. And it's pretty much what you get from Mazda's RX-8. The smooth, unnatural, salted lines that build and ebb and flow and dip, filling your ear holes with acoustic ease. Look, it's an acquired taste, but since the RX-8 constantly needs so much work, well, <laughs> they're cheap. And when you hear the noises, you might just be tempted to go pick one up. Bach, Beethoven, Strauss, Wagner, Porsche, the German classics. The kind of music that everyone knows instantly, but you can't remember the last time you actually intentionally listened to it. The Boxster isn't a premier orchestra putting on a big show though. This is the College Music Society putting on a decent, but much more affordable and comfortable concert. It may not have the precision, but it's definitely got all the soul. And that comes through in the notes. The RX-8 I mentioned is smooth and easy. It's Ableton Live for your iPhone. The FC RX-7 is analog and raw. A DJ in a small club still using a TR-808. The older Mazda has something that new engines simply can't. An unpredictability that makes it more interesting to listen to on repeat. Add in the harsh percussion of a turbocharger lighting off. And it's just fantastic. Now, maybe you can't afford a Turbo RX-7, but you can afford a base model to tune and customize yourself. Just like building your own home workstation. Just take a listen to the possibilities. You ever go to a cheap bar with a cover band and that cover band is almost better than the original? You sit there saying, holy crap, I can't believe these guys are this cheap to see. The band is Maserati Quattro Porte and they exclusively cover these other little Italian guys, Ferrari. Just beware that the reason the band is so cheap is because they have tons of infighting, drinking, and often miss shows because of breakdowns. When they can get it together though, they sound like this. Do you get shivers when I say unequal length headers? Well, you're a weirdo. My kind of weirdo. Because that's what gives the WRX its iconic low growl. Unlike the V8s and their predictable, slower rock roots, the Subaru Flat 4 is an axe that's drop tuned through an amp that's overdriven way too hard. So it cuts in and out as the line between bass and guitar start to blur. Don't believe me? Roll the footage. Here in the States, we don't often get a lot of the modern German music, but in the 90s, the country of beer and pretzels sent over some phenomenal hits. We got Rammstein, and we got the Volkswagen VR6, which combines the low crunch of a big engine with the guttural cries of a four pod. Just like the German metal-ish band, it's hard to explain. It's easier if you just hear it for yourself and come to your own conclusion. Now for something controversial. I don't love the sound of a 2JZ. Are you stupid? I mean, it's, it's fine, but an inline six will just never quite do it for me. I want low notes, rumbles, and the sound of raw power. The good news is that Toyota can still bring it with the 1UZ in the GS400, or the LS, or the SC, etc., etc. But there's one big difference between the Japanese 8 and the American counterparts. Unlike the American engines, the 1UZ isn't afraid to go out and hit those high notes. Look, just listen to it first. That's a V12 Mercedes S-Class, which amazingly, you can get for under 20 grand. 
I really believe this is probably the cheapest V12 you can buy. And how could you possibly argue with the sound? Even if you're deaf, I bet you could hear this thing coming from a mile off. Just like the noises from the EDM hall down the street, the one that keeps you up every night. Go there and get a drink, it's worth it. Here's a few more to leave you with a better taste and cap off this whole show. So that's my list. What do you think? Do you think I'm an idiot? I'm sure you'll let me know. Speaking of great sounding cars that are terrible decisions, check out this video on the worst turbos of all time. Otherwise, what are you still doing here? Go check out some of our other videos, here and here. Thanks for watching this episode of Idealist. I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>